In today's video we're gonna create a cool Pepsi logo animation from scratch using some simple and really effective techniques. Stay till the end. Ok, so we move to After Effects and you can already see that I have my logo prepared for the animation part. I'm gonna change the background and go with a black color. You can see that this is just a simple 4K resolution composition, so just 3840-2160, frame rate about 30 frames per second and duration, I just go with 19 seconds for now, but of course the animation is not gonna be so long. So let's go with something like this, and what I would like to do firstly, I would like to add a few gradients here and there, and I just hold option key and click on a fill, and I have my gradient, ok, let's sample this color from here, and here we're gonna, maybe let's do something like this, oh this looks nice, and let's do something similar to this, right? Let's just sample this value here, copy this hex code and now add a gradient, paste this value here also and I'm gonna make sure that this part is a bit darker and let's also place those points in the correct positions and now let's copy this gradient and paste it to our letters okay and we should have something like this and that's a solid start so let's move to animation part and let's do some magic so the first step let's hide those letters and let's focus only on this main mark so uh, i'm gonna hide also those two shapes and i would like to move this uh, this part to the center so i'm gonna press p on the keyboard and and move it let's just keep this final keyframe because we need to go back to this position so i'm gonna put this final keyframe here and here i'm just gonna go to align tab and just click align to the center okay and now we have our shape at the center and now we can play with it so what i would like to do i would also like to add another keyframe here maybe something like this just to add a cool movement so maybe something like this, okay. And we need to go to convert vertex still and just make sure that here we've got this linear move and only we play with those first two keyframes. So something like this and then we move to our final position. We can duplicate this keyframe to have a one second here and then move to the final position. Let's play with the scale. We are gonna place the final scale value here and here we can maybe go with 10% or maybe even less, maybe 4%. Okay, and let's maybe here keep it at 15. And now this doesn't look uh, so nice, so let's play with a graph editor. So let's select those two keyframes, press F9 and go to graph editor. Maybe try something like this. Okay, this is too slow. So let's play with these keyframes. Still too slow. Okay, let's add an echo effect to add this kind of fake motion blur. I'm gonna change the echo operator to maximum, number of echoes to 12 and uh, echo time to 0 0.002. Okay, let's see what we have. Hmm, this looks better. Maybe it's still too big for me. Oh, that's better. Okay, I'm, go I'm gonna move those keyframes a bit to the right. We don't want to focus on this movement right now. And here at the center, I'm gonna add a two, two spheres which are gonna be moving. Let's create a new shape and go to ellipse tool and we're holding shift. We're gonna make a perfect circle and then make sure that the anchor point is at the center and just align this with our main shape. And now let's add a stroke and let's delay the fill. Let's go to ellipse path and change the size a bit. Okay, let's go to stroke and do something like this maybe. And now let's add the trim paths. And now we're gonna play with this. Okay, in stroke let's also make sure that we have round cap selected and round join. And here with trim paths we're gonna start, start with 1%. So let's add a keyframe up at the end value and offset. And now press U to only see those two keyframes. And let's add here one. And here maybe do like 15. Easy is those keyframes. Let's see what we have. Okay, this is a bit too slow. 
this is better and now let's duplicate this layer let's sample the color for the second from our blue shape okay and we're gonna move it a bit so we have something like this we're gonna adjust this in a second but for now it's okay let's parent those two layers but make sure that you are at the final position and parent those two layers to the main one and now they are gonna follow our main shape and we need this because we want to animate those two things so let's also go and adjust the size of those two new layers just make sure that they align here and also for this one okay and now for those two layers we're gonna add a mask so let's go here and click here to create mask and we're gonna do something like this and add a keyframe here at the mask path and let's go a few frames to the left press command and t or ctrl t to transform the mask and let's do something like this and now if we see we've got this nice animation at our mask let's easy is those keyframes let's see what we have okay this is a bit too slow of course but we are gonna work on this in a moment do the same for this it would be nice to reveal the shape from this point and this one from this point we're gonna add a mask okay let's add a keyframe and co again command t or ctrl t do something like this and voila f9 let's solo those two strokes and we're gonna reveal this, this red layer here so let's cut this layer here and leave it like this and with this one we're gonna go a bit further to do something like this and we're gonna cut it also here i think we need to start with this blue layer here and reveal this shape a bit faster so let's do this here okay that's better i'm gonna also sample the color for the blue one to make sure that they match each other so i'm gonna sample the color here and for the red one i'm gonna sample from here and we should have something like this okay and now i'm gonna i would like to add a two shapes one blue and one red so two small dots make sure that the anchor point is at the center and let's go to this place this is gonna be the first one and here we can see how much we need to adjust our shape okay this is gonna be the first one and this is gonna be our ending point for this here it's gonna be our second one but we're gonna go back to this one in a second let's start with this one let's select a p on the keyboard just create a movement for this easy is those keyframes add an echo effect the same values as before okay I'm gonna adjust this a bit and I need to go here, change the curve a bit to something like this. Okay, let's make sure that the colors are the same. That should do the job. And let's duplicate this and we're gonna just change the color and this should appear here and we're gonna change the position the ending position and the start position you can see that i'm playing with those few with a few layers to make sure that the motion is smooth it's just a simple simple stuff so after a while we should have something like this and now I would like to go back to our white layer. I would like to start with a stroke, with a simple stroke. So let's go to our group and add a stroke. And on the fill layer, let's just add a keyframe on the opacity. And here I'm gonna do 0%. Okay, that's nice. And the stroke, we can leave it maybe at 3, let's see. Or maybe even higher to 10. And I'm gonna add an expression to our scale here, just a simple elastic expression to add a bit of bounciness. Here we could add a bit of rotation. Let's go to the to this layer and just play with a path a bit. So I'm gonna add the final keyframe here and here I'm just gonna try to match the red shape. Just a small touch, but we're gonna add uh, another layer of a uh, movement. And this could be happening when the shapes are joining each other, or maybe a bit later. 
and F9, those two keyframes. And now to the main layer, I would like to add a bit of rotation. And let's also parent those two, those two small strokes to the main layer to make sure that everything is connected properly. And here I'm gonna play with a rotation and here a uh, one. And let's see. Okay, let's add an elastic expression. Okay, looks cool. And as the rotation goes, we can bring back the white color. And also as the rotation go, we can add a bit more movement. We can play a bit with a scale. Let's see how this is gonna look. Okay, I'm gonna keep this as it is right now. I would like to add a few small effects here and there. So the first one is gonna be, we're gonna duplicate those two layers, change the label color, and as the rotation goes, we go to ellipse, change the size of those two small strokes, and also let's change the width to make sure that they are really, really small. They could be our additional effects. I'm gonna duplicate them, change the size, do the same for the blue one. And just adjust the position of those layers. So as the rotation goes, we would like to introduce those few small effects. Well, from what I can see, we need to also parent those two layers to our main shape. And now let's add a bit of deep glow. Let's start with this layer. Okay, let's copy this, paste the second one, and here do the same, do the same, and to those small layers too. Okay, now it's much, much better. And I would like to also add this deep glow effect to those two layers, to the red one and to the blue one. Okay, but I'm gonna decrease the exposure a bit to 0.4, and let's add a new adjustment layer at the top and add an echo effect here. Add number of echoes to 12, maximum, and decay time to maybe something around 0.5. Now let's see what we have. We get this cool, cool delay effect. Let's also change echo time to minus 0.005. Let's see how this looks. Okay, maybe let's increase it. And I'm gonna add a second additional effect. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, change the label, delay those keyframes, delay the trim paths. We should have just a simple circle with a stroke. And we're gonna scale it from 0 to, in my case, 1.5 thousand percent. But this is not at the center and we need to fix it. Let's hide this adjustment layer for now. Okay, that's better. It's cool and du let's duplicate it and change color to the red one. So one blue, one red. For the final revelation, we need to show those few layers. So let's go back to our main layer and let's move back those two keyframes that we saved at the beginning. And we're gonna F9 them. So just a simple easy ease. As the effects go away, we move back to our original position. You can see that the timeline is lagging a bit. We've got so many effects here especially this deep glow effect, which is CPU heavy. And here we're gonna do a simple scale effect. So let's put a final keyframe here, zero here, trim those layers, and add an expression, elastic expression, adjust those keyframes a bit, solo those layers to see what we have. Okay, that's nice. Let's sequence those two layers. That's super cool. And we can show the last trademark value with a simple opacity effect. Let's hide the adjustment layer for now. Okay, I'm gonna adjust this movement here. I would like to keep it faster at the beginning and slower at the end. Okay, let's adjust those layers to make sure as the Pepsi logo goes to the left, those letters appear. Okay, I'm gonna add a deep glow too. We're gonna change the exposure a bit to 0.5, 0 0.5, and let's copy to the rest of those layers. I'm gonna adjust the gradient here at the Pepsi mark. 
it's a bit too bright for me. Now it's better. Turn on the adjustment layer and let's create a new composition, animation, part two. And here I'm gonna put the first composition, animation part one. I'm gonna add an effect shift channels. And here I'm gonna make sure that only the right is active. I'm gonna duplicate this composition two times and I'm gonna go to the second one and make sure that only green is active and the red is full off. And on the third one, only blue is active and the red is also full off. And right now we need to change the mode to add, add and add. We don't see anything, but if we change the scale value here, go here with 101 and here with 100. 0.5. We're gonna get this cool chromatic aberration. It's not too strong, but this is what we want. And you can see that the timeline is lagging really, really much. So I'm gonna change the quarter and let's create the final adjustment layer at the top. And we can add a bit of noise to reduce the banding effect. 5% should do the job. Okay, and let's render this and let's see the final result. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something from it. If you enjoyed this content, please give a like, comment and subscribe. Let me know in comments what do you think about this one. If you want to be a bit more up to date with everything what I do, you can follow me up on Instagram. The link is down in the description. And what can I say more? Have an amazing day. Have fun with those techniques. And to the next time. Bye.